my Jesus, I love you. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the pleasures of sin, I will close your eyes, sing it prayerfully. Let's sing together now. I great. There is a time that we love you. It is now. And this morning we are here to recommit our lives unto you and to reaffirm our love for you. By the time we are living here, Father, may we be convicted to love you and to fear you. Spirit of the living God, take over this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And of course this morning I... I want to also thank God for the life of my own brother, covenant brother, Reverend John Kato. Put your hands together for him. Amen. He's a good man. Amen. God bless you so much. And we acknowledge the first lady, the second lady. In their absence, we acknowledge all of them. God bless you so much. Amen. And this morning, like I always say, I am humble to stand before great people of God to share the word of God. It is a blessing to share God's word. But this morning, when he called me, something just came into mind. And I decided to preach a topic I've entitled, The Characteristics of a Person Who Fears God characteristics of a person who fears God. Amen. And may you fear the Lord. After this service, may you fear the Lord. Because the body of Christ, so many things are happening. The world is vying for our attention, calling for our attention. The system is pushing us so hard. And therefore, if you are not careful, the fear of God will leave you, though you are in church. Though you are in church, but there is no fear of God. And this morning, my foundational text is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. And it says, let us hear the whole matter. Let us hear the whole matter. Hallelujah. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of God. After all is said and done, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And the conclusion of the whole matter is that after all said and done, fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Let us also go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. It says, and now Israel... What do the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, 
and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. How many things there? What is the Lord requiring from us? We are the Israel, the new Israel. And God is requiring these things from us. He says, but to fear the Lord thy God, do you fear God? To walk in all his ways. God has his own ways that he wants us to follow. All his ways, the Bible tells us. Amen. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Those of God, us who are not serving God. This morning, may this scripture convict you. Amen. Amen. Because there are people who are so happy with their lives. They have their car, they have their house, their family. They go and come. There is no time for God. I am okay. You are not okay. If you don't find a place in the kingdom to serve God, you are not okay. Amen. My last foundational scripture. When, you know, Jonah, you know, entered the ship and there was crisis and the people came to him. Do you know what he said? He said in Jonah chapter 1 verse 9, he says, and he said unto them, I am an Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God who, the God of heaven and which made the sea and the dry land. I am a Hebrew. Let me ask you a question. Can you stand anywhere and declare that I am a child of God and I fear God? You will have the moral authority to say that if you really fear God. If we will go into the secret of your life, what will we find? You can only have the moral authority to say this if you really fear God. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at some few case studies in the Bible. The few case studies. You know, in the book of Exodus, we have a story that talks about, you know, the people of Israel in Egypt. It got to a point, the more they oppressed them, the more they were increasing. So the king was afraid and said, let us devise a strategy. Because if we are not careful, the way these people are multiplying, it comes a time when we are at war, they will join our enemies and fight us. In, actually, in actual fact, the reason was that they had picked it in the realms of the spirit. That one day, one day, God is going to bring a deliverer. They had picked it in the spirit. So the king gave a commandment and called certain Hebrew midwives who were serving in that land. Gave them a commandment and said, you know what? I want you to do something for me. I want you to do something for me. And I'll reward you. Do that thing for me, I'll reward you. When the Hebrew women are coming to deliver at the labor ward, if they are male children, kill them. If they are girls, save them alive. And so we read from the book of Exodus chapter 1. Let's read from verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, which... The name of the one was Shifra. And the name of the other, Poa. Okay? And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, see and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then shall then she shall leave. Let's continue. But the midwives feared God. Note that. The midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. They feared God. Let's continue. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing? And have saved the men children alive. And the Hebrew midwives and the midwives said unto Pharaoh, 
because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptians' women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. All right. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiply and waxed mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. He made them houses. Amen. In our days, I want to believe God that we still have the shifters and the poor in the system. Because these were people who were working in the world. Just women did. Because I believe that there was no pastor that they went for consultation. They didn't go for consultation. They said, Pastor, this is a situation I need counseling. These were people of God. And they decided, you know what? I will rather fear God and not do that thing. Because in those days, if a king requires you to do something and you don't do, your head can easily go off. But these women were courageous. And they said, you know what? We are going to stand for our God because we fear him. And come what may, we know that the king is powerful. But come what may, we will be safe. This morning, I came to encourage somebody that, look, the world is coming after us. In those days, Egypt represented the world system. And we are working in the world. The Bible says you are in the world, but you are not in the world. When you get up every morning, you are going to the world system to work. There will be temptations. There will be things that will, call, that, that will try to push you to do something against your God. But if you fear God, you can stand boldly and say, I fear the Lord. And therefore, I will not do it. In the name of Jesus. May the spirit of the fear of the Lord come upon you this morning. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 1, that said, there was a man in the land of Uz called Job. And this man was perfect, was upright, and feared God and eschewed all evil. Let's continue. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. And his substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses, and a very great storehouse, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east, because he fears the Lord. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone his day. And sent and called for their sisters, their three sisters, to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting was gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them. And rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of all. For Job said, if may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. This did Job continually. This was the extent to which Job feared God. That his children would go for party and he would send forth and sanctify them and give an offering and say, maybe they have cursed God and I didn't know. I don't want to displease God. I don't want to do anything to displease. This was the extent to which this man feared God. And so if the Bible tells us about his riches, we, are, we shouldn't be surprised. Because anyone who fears God, you are on your way to prosperity. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the extent to which Job feared God. He was sent and sanctified. He says, I don't want to get into trouble with God. I will do everything not to displease God. And this morning... I came to encourage somebody as a child of God. If you will see the hand of God in your life, if you see prosperity in your life, be, 
then we must be able to say of you like Job, that there is a woman in this bank. This woman is perfect, upright. This woman excuse every evil and then fears God. May they be able to say, this woman in this community really fears God. This is just the foundation. Amen. We'll go there. Hallelujah. I am believing God that we will find the jobs in the system. The jobs in the system. Because in the body of Christ, there are few people who are walking in that line. And may you be one of them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, this morning, I'm now coming to my main message. Characteristics of a person. Who, when you see a person who fears God, how does he look like? What are the qualities? What are the marks of a person who fears God? What are the marks? In a way, let me try and define the fear of God for you. The fear of God refers to the respect or reverence that you are called unto God, which will not allow you to do anything that will discredit him. Anything that will put his name into disrepute. Anything that will violate his law. So because you show God so much respect and reverence, you are careful not to do anything that will discredit his name. You are careful not to do anything that will put his name into disrepute. You are careful not to violate his laws because he is the king. He has a domain and all of us are subject and he has his rules. So you be careful not to violate those laws. That is the fear of God. Do you respect God? Do you respect God in your doings and dealings? Do you respect God in your daily activities? When you go to the office, do you respect him? Though he is not a physical being, but he is there with you. Do you respect him? That is the fear of the Lord. Amen. Now, if you want to know a person who fears the Lord, number one, a person who fears the Lord does everything to glorify God. Everything you do, you do it to glorify God. Your actions, your inactions, <coughs> everything must glorify God. Amen. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, and whatsoever ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do it all to the glory of God. Do it all to the glory of God. What therefore ye eat or drink or what ye do, do all to the glory of God. What you eat, what you drink. And if we want to go into that, the things that some of, some of us drink, does it glorify God? The eating and the drinking, the parties. One time, <laughs> myself as a Mike and a group of people were going to, you know, greet, you know, a certain <laughs> family that, you know, the children had lost their parent, and we went there to greet them. And us. This group of people gathered somewhere. So, yeah, corner somewhere. So when we enter, we say, oh, hi, hi. And I wanted to go there and go and shake their hands. Immediately, they rushed and come, came and met me. You know the reason? There were beer bottles under. So I said, oh, let's go and give you a nice place. You, let's go here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Alcoholic drinks. Alcoholic drinks have become so sweet in our mouths. God says that whatever you drink, let it glorify God. Whatever you eat, does it glorify God? Whatever you do, does it glorify God? 
to the extent that some people, when they are having a function that is supposed to happen in church, they don't want it because they know what they want to do. In some way, one day there was a wedding here. There was a wedding here. One day there was a wedding here. And at the corner somewhere, they had set up a certain bar that people go and mix different kinds of drinks. And it will amaze you the queue that was there. It was Pastor Cato that went and drove them away. Say, it can't happen here. The least event, the least opportunity, we want to drink all the drinks that we have not been able to drink for the past three months. God is so particular. That is why I said, whatsoever you eat or drink or do, do it in the name of the Lord. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Your words and your deeds, whatever you do and whatever you say, do it all to glorify God. When you say something, that it, does it go out, out there to you know, lift up somebody? Does it glorify God? Does it praise God? It says that do all. From today, I pray that you will do everything to glorify God in the name of Jesus. Number two, if you want to know a person who fears God, a person who fears God will rather please God than please men in all situations. In every situation, that person will rather please God than please men. There are times you get into a certain situation, a certain fixed situation, and that will determine whether you fear God. Amen? Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. And they called them and commanded them, saying that they should not, you know, preach or teach at all in the name of Jesus. They should not teach, preach or teach in the name of Jesus. Let's continue. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God, that we should Hearken unto you more than God, judge ye. Okay. This was a situation they were asked not to do it. It was, you know, the authorities versus God. The authorities versus God. In your office, authority versus God. Some of us, we fear our boss more than God. When our boss is coming, we are trembling. It's like a whole, your boss is like a whole God unto you. So you would rather, you know, obey your boss than to obey God. Okay. These people, they commanded them, the authorities, and they had the power to execute them. They had the power to execute them. But they said, don't preach. We warn you if you preach what is going to happen to you you'll be sorry for your life. And they had the boldness to say, hmm, you people, you don't know what you are talking about. Judge yourself. Is it right for us to obey you than to obey God? If you fear God, it does not matter the situation. It does not matter how hard the situation is. You will rather prefer to please God. You will rather... Let's look at these Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. These people were commanded to worship a certain golden image. That at the sound of all the instruments, the psaltery, the sagbut, the, 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 the harp, at the sound of it, everyone should bow. They did the first time. These people say, for where? I won't buy. The second time, I won't buy. So, 
when you read from Daniel chapter 3, reading from verse 12. There are certain Jews who thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, It is true, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set, set up. Now, if ye be ready, that at the time when ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sagbut, the sal 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 psaltery, the, do uh, uh, the dulcima, and all kinds of music, ye f fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Right? Let's continue. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O king Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We are not going to think about it. It is not something we are going to sit down and reason. How should we answer the king? Say, king, we are not careful at all. We have the answer for you. So you get ready. We have the answer for you. All right. Let's continue. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the, fire, uh, the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Mm -hmm. This is the place. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden Im image which thou hast set. Two things was presented. You worship an idol and your lives will be spared. Okay. Or you continue to believe in that your God. And let's see whether he will deliver you. And because these people fear God, they decided, you know what? Our king is able to deliver us. But even if he does not, even if he does not, even if he does not, we will not worship you. Even if it means I should be sacked, I will not worship. In that office, if it means that they should you know, sack me from the office, I will not still worship. If it means that they have to put me in jail, I will not still bow down. Because God is a jealous God. You know one thing that always got the people of Israel into trouble with God? I don't worship. Bowing, bowing down to something that is different from God. That was the thing that sent the people. And these people knew the commandment of God. In Exodus chapter 20, it says that I am the Lord that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Do not have other gods beside me or before me. It says do not make any graven image that has any likeness in heaven or on earth. It says do not bow down unto them for I am a jealous God. I visit the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. When you bow down to anything apart from God, you hate God. Those who hate me, anyone who loves anything more than God, you are an idol worshiper. When we come to your house, we may not see, you know, the images and all that. But in reality, you are an idol worshiper. I am the Lord that visits the iniquities to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me and showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandment. Hallelujah. 
These guys knew the commandment. And therefore, they decided that, you know what? We are not going to bow. A person who fears God is mindful of what? His motives. His motives. What is the motive behind the concern you went to do? What is the motive behind those words that you said? What is the motive behind you visiting the man of God? What is the motive behind your actions and inactions? The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 2 verse 16, it says, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of the heart of men, the secret of the heart of men, in the day when God shall judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, everything we do may not be visible to human beings. But let me tell you, your motives are being recorded. Your motives are being recorded. Why do you do that which you do? Why did you decide to join the protocol? Is it because you have seen a nice chick, so you want to get closer? Why did you decide to join the choir? Is it because of marriage or because you love to serve God? There is a reason why you are doing what you are doing. And is, is that reason glorifying God? Is it in alignment with the will of God? Anyone who fears God, whatever you do, you will be mindful of your motives. Your motives. Hallelujah. A person who fears God, because of that I just mentioned, and then we will go. A person who fears God does not compromise on the commandments of God. Does not compromise at all on the commandments of God. Like I said earlier on, the three Hebrew children, they knew the commandment of God that says that do not bow down to any God. And therefore they said that we are not going to compromise. We are standing on our grounds. You know the commandment of God. The commandment says, do not fornicate. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not covet thy name, that which is thy neighbor's. You know the commandment. Do not take a bribe. Do not bear false will. You know the commandments. Are you ready to stand for it? You know, the devil will always tell you that, you know what? You are missing out. There's enjoyment all over. People are enjoying. Are they dead? <laughs> that is the trick of the enemy. He will tell you that, look. They are saying that do not fornicate. So why did God create? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the enemy will point to you and tell you that you know what? This your friend is doing it. That your friend is doing it. That your friend is doing it. What has happened to them? Look at them. They are enjoying. And you. You. But every commandment God gives us, he has a reason. He has a reason. You may not see it, but God has a reason for every commandment. If God says do not fornicate, he has a reason. Because by the time you get into the marriage, there are certain things you have to deal with. Hallelujah. <laughs> if God in those days told the people of Israel that you shall not eat a pork... Not that a pork was so good, but he was preventing them from eating the fats that would cause their health. I said, every commandment has a reason. And so don't think that you are smarter than God. And said, 
God doesn't want you to enjoy. He knows that the day you take and eat of that fruit, you will become wiser than him. You can never become wiser than God. And he's using the same old trick. Do not compromise on the commandments of God. Because that is his commandment, his laws that he uses to rule his kingdom. And if you want to be part of his kingdom, you must not compromise on it. God will bless you if you don't, don't, you, you, you don't take that bribe. If you really serve God, he will bless you without do, you doing over invoicing and our invoicing. Oh, yes. My God is a blesser. I say my God is a blesser. He is a blesser. He blessed Job. He blessed Abraham. He blessed Jacob. They didn't do any of this, you know, acquise to get those riches. Anyone who fears God will place God first in everything. And anyone who places God first, God is always mindful of that person. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things have been added. And so God has commandment. For instance, he wants you to seek him first. Place him first in your finances. So he says, bring the, your tithe. He wants you to place him first in all the produce that come to you. He says, bring your first fruit. In fact, in those days, the firstborn belongs to God. Everything, when you place God first, God will begin to bring the other things. Anyone who fears God, when it is time for tithes, say, you know what, I fear God. Whatever belongs to God, let me go and give it to him. Yeah. Yes, you are so careful not to displease God. In fact, some time back I made mention, I said, if all of us were to be committed to our tithes, this church will be rich. Yes. And we'll be able to take care of so many things. There are just a few of us. Even if we tithe, we don't tithe the right amount. It's true. You are coming to church and I want to encourage all of us, including all of us here, that when it is time for you to bring your tithe or whatever, you must prayerfully bring it. Prayerfully. Don't come to church and now, you know, oh, I've forgotten, so how do we calculate the tithe? Then you are asking a pastor, I need an explanation. It says 10%. Bring it. Amen. We'll be closing soon. But a person who fears God will do everything not to sin against God who do everything not to sin against God. Sin is staring at you. Temptation is coming. And you are saying that because I fear God, I must do everything not to sin against God. Every sin is against God. And so, Mrs. Potiphar comes to Joseph and says, you know, I like your six pack. I like your height. I like the way you look, you are handsome. I want to give you scholarship. This one, you won't struggle. And then, he tries to rape him. <laughs> he tries to rape him. And this man said, you know what? He says, Your, my master has committed everything into my hands. My master has committed everything into my hands. He has not kept anything away from me except you because you are his wife. Therefore, why would I do such a thing to sin against God? Genesis chapter 39 verse 9. Why would I do such a thing and sin against God? 
The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 11, Thy word that I have kept in my heart, that I might not sin against you. A person who fears God will do everything. This morning, I want to pray that the spirit of the fear of God will dwell upon us. Because the fear of God is a spirit. According to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, the spirit of God is a, the fear of God is a spirit. And when that spirit dominates your life, what happens is that you will fear the Lord. You will do everything in reverence and in respect of God. Amen. Shall we rise up? Oh, if you are clapping, clap unto God. Just close your eyes this morning. Just close your eyes. A person who fears God will not give his worship unto anything. Will not give his worship unto any God. No matter how that offer may be attractive. That person will never give his worship unto God. Close your eyes. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray briefly. Lift up your voice and say, Father, this morning, as I pray, let your spirit come upon me. The spirit of the fear of the Lord in my office, in all that I do, everything that I do. Father, let the fear of the Lord rule my life. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the Spirit of the Lord come upon us in the name of Jesus. Somebody the pray fear in Jesus, quietly within Lord. your heart. In the name Say, of Lord, Jesus, the fear of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, uh, let the that spirit, spirit of fear my life. of the Lord. In the name of Jesus yes, Christ, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of the fear of in the, the name Lord, of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, O oh Lord. Father, this morning, we are grateful unto you. By reason of this way, may the spirit of the fear of the Lord dwell upon us. In our offices, in our homes, in whatever we do, Father, may we fear you. May you, we accord you all the respect and the reverence. This morning, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.